but again, with Bobby Mason, you're going to have to get the puck up over the pads. I mean, he, he covers low. His legs go down so smoothly. There's a great spinorama there. It takes a lot of body control as well by Brian McClellan. Now, if he can just throw this one up, but of course, when you spin like this, you don't have a clue. You just want to get it on the net, and that's basically... And the rebound was right there, but Mason did a good job of covering that rebound. Funny thing, a power play, you work for one real good chance. The Stars get it here, but as you'll see, boom, right off the post. Nice shot by Lawton. Then they get another chance, but it's from far out. Pank, it's, it's a good one-timer, though. But it's a little bit high, and Pank, actually, I think it hits the man out top and flutters in a little bit. Pank's able to easily catch it. Here's that, you see, Bellows is jamming the net. Pank's really distracted. He doesn't even really get a good look at the puck, and that would have been in the net, except for the goal post. And the real competitive athletes really find an extra edge when they come into this building and hear the Star Spangled Banner played like that with the crowd going. All right, scratches for tonight's game. The Chicago Blackhawks are without a, a few. The only person not injured, other than Bob Murray, who's just sitting, is Adam Creighton. He is suspended for a game. For the Flyers, well, Huffman, Mantha, and Solomon are healthy. Sinisalo, Craven, and LaForest are hurt. Six extras for the Flyers tonight. I remember Terry Gregson telling me, the referee, as you see Mike Keenan at the Chicago Blackhawks bench, Mike will be Bill's guest after the first period of our game. Terry Gregson said, if you can't get revved up to referee a game at Chicago Stadium, you should check your pulse because you're probably dead. Troy Murray on the faceoff. He's got good body control. See, that was to the right side of his body. Now you've got to cross that left hand over and catch it, and that can be difficult, but it saves a, a dangerous rebound. Now watch, you see that left hand go over to the right side. See, that's not as easy as it looks, but again, it eliminates so many dangerous rebounds and a nice play by Kerry Taco. Chicago leads the all-time series. They've been a little more dominant than even that shows at the stadium here in Chicago, although in recent years, Minnesota has done much better here. Stars trying to win for the first time on Chicago ice this season. Matter of fact, beat the Blackhawks for the first time this year. They're two minutes and 18 seconds away from doing so. More. <laughs> oh, they're taking their uh, right apart. They're taking the... Uh stars in flames. They will be playing Wednesday night in Met Center at 7.30. And the Stars hit the road again. We'll be televising next Friday from Buffalo and then next Saturday from Landover, Maryland as the Stars take on the Washington Capitals. Boy, this has been a frustrating game, I'm sure, for both goalies, especially for Donnie Beaupre, who's had a fight through screens, guys jamming in front of the net, deflections like that. A couple of saves he made and went right over to the open guy. And uh, boy, you know, you think you got it going sometimes, like Donnie has in this rink, and you feel so good, and the puck just doesn't do what you want it to. And uh, no matter what you do some nights, you give up seven goals, and you think, did I really play that bad? I didn't feel bad. The Blackhawks leading the North Stars by a score of two to nothing. And fans, mark down the 25th on your calendar. Stroh's 15-pack cooler bag night at Met Center. First 6,000 fans attending the game receive a free insulated 15-pack cooler bag. Courtesy of Stroh's beer and the North Star. There's the number. Hope to see a lot of fun at Met Center. The National Hockey League. 
21-16, the Blackhawks in shots on goal at the moment. The Hawks lead two to nothing. Now it's Gagne, Fraser, Cicerelli, Gates, and Giles. Eagles for the draw for Chicago. Of course, uh, the big thing, Mike, is, is the fact that Mario Lemieux wants to get the goals to get a win here today. The Penguins need to do that, and Rick Hill, of course, is aware of that also. Well, he enters the game with 54. He needs 55 to tie Kehoe. But the Blackhawks have a tremendous center iceman here in Chicago by the name of Denny Savard. And unless you were, weren't watching, Savard has now passed up Wayne Gretzky in the scoring race and is now second behind Mario Lemieux. Gretzky, of course, not playing in this game. And Savard with a brilliant move against the Oilers on Wednesday night taking the lead into second place over Gretzky with this fabulous goal right here at the stadium in Chicago. So the Penguins will be matching up against a very tough center ice from the Denny Savard. Interestingly now, the Penguins are going to go back as we get some final comments on the goaltending. Frank Pietrangelo is going to go this afternoon in the net for the fans against Darren Pang of the Hawks. Well, the reason for that, Mike, is that Frank Pietrangelo is in goal both times the Penguins beat the Hawks this year. And uh, last time they were in this stadium, they beat them 8-4, and Pietrangelo played extremely well. So I think Pierre Kramer realizing that the Hawks are going to come out storming. Pietrangelo, good reflex goal goaltender will be able to handle it. He's been here before and he should be ready to go. Nice Sunday afternoon game. Sit back, relax, and enjoy it with us all coming up right here on the Puck came through the crease. Larmer was hauled down by Johnson. Savard had the puck, lost it, but tapped it out in front. Thrown to the net by Vive. Kicked out by Peter Angelo. Nyland got it, shot it to the net. Peter Angelo made the save, but both times the rebounds with handles on him. And Rick Vive found the handle and put it in to make it 7-4. Keep kicking that puck back out straight on like that, and that's what's going to happen. But you can't really fault Peter Angelo because the Hawks were all over him, and he's just reacting, just doing everything he can to stop the puck at that point. 37th of the year. For the Chicago Blackhawks, the late penalty is going to be issued against the fans, but the penalties will still be put in here. They pick up the hats here at the stadium in Chicago. Does he wants to have Lemieux and Coffee out there here for this final minute of this power play. So what he's done is taken uh, some extra time, I believe. Well, maybe not. We see Bob Erie and Robbie Brown out here. I can almost bet Lemieux's going to be back on. But I think what he wants to do is employ Lemieux and Coffee just as much time as he possibly can. He'll get the 30 seconds, and of course, he wasted about 30 before he called the timeout. And he'd love to have us right now, maybe take a break on the TV side to help him out, too. But I don't think that's going to happen. We've got a 7-5 Chicago lead. I'll tell you, Bob Hall's been kind, too. He's let him uh, be more than 30 seconds. Well, the Penguins getting up into that area that uh, is the average for the Hawks and shots against. Uh, Blackhawks average about 35 shots against per game. And Darren Pang, it's easy to see why under his performance today, why he uh, has the save percentage that he does. He has to stop so many shots. I don't know. You know, it's more than 30 seconds, but I'll tell you, both or all three uh, officials came over. The two linesmen. Dan in this series at all. You have a day job, Frank? No, <laughs> nighttime in my business. Okay, do you have chimes on this, baby? Everything. Go ahead and let them go. Let's hear some chimes. Bum, bum, bum. Man's got to know his limitations. Do you know how many stops there are on here? Uh, maybe a thousand. Okay, I'm going to come back in a couple of weeks, and we're going to test you, okay? Uh, Why not play my favorite, uh, I'm So Excited by the Pointer Sisters? Okay. Go ahead and take it. I'll get out of the way so you can watch Nancy as we leave you. 